Hey folks, today we're looking at the Pioneer XDJ RX3. Now this is a worthy successor to the RX2, which was a great device that was loved by many. There are a number of upgrades that come to this one. The one that really stands out to me, just taking out of the box, is this big, beautiful 10.1 inch, bright, lovely high res screen. But there are a number of things to talk about when it comes to this new two channel standalone DJ system. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the XDJ RX3 and see if it's right for you. Way back in 2015, Pioneer DJ released the original XDJ RX. For many, this provided a stepping stone for DJs who wanted to transition into laptop free DJing and get into the record box ecosystem without completely breaking the bank. It sported a familiar two decks and mixer layout, and it was a cheaper alternative to a set of XDJ 1000s. Pioneer would later release the XDJ RX2, adding upgrades and enhancements like the touch capability on the screen. This would allow DJs to do things like access the QWERTY keyboard for searching or do needle drop for scrubbing through tracks. With RX3, perhaps we're seeing this all-in-one system come into its final form. So like its predecessors, this is a two-channel standalone system which can play record box analyzed tracks via USB stick. Now, for many people, ditching the laptop is kind of the entire point of a system like this. However, you can also connect to record box software on your laptop using performance mode, and Pioneer says that it will also fully support Serato DJ in early 2022. The XDJ RX3 sports a somewhat refined design, bringing it into parity with other Pioneer hardware. So the screen has received a massive upgrade, and it contains proper color on jog displays, which give you visual feedback right here at your hands. And the mixer section has been largely expanded, essentially providing you with what's a two-channel version of the DJM 900 Nexus 2, with a few differences, of course, like the omission of a Magvel crossfader. That being said, Pioneer claims to have also updated the audio design to help eliminate external noise and produce a clear and powerful sound. If you think the XDJ RX3 might be the perfect device for you, head on over to the DJHookup.com and order yours today before the holiday rush. The DJ Hookup offers no-brainer pricing, unrivaled convenience, including free shipping to the continental US for most orders, and real humans available to help you seven days a week. Okay, so as we take a look here at the top of the unit, you will notice, like I said, that nice, big, beautiful screen, 10.1 inches. Uh, when you combine that with sort of the, uh, you know, the little enhancements that they've made to the top of this thing here, uh, it really gives you that, like, CDJ3000 experience, which is really nice. So I put together a little playlist here, and uh, it's really nice to be able to use this larger touch screen uh, to be able to control this stuff now, uh, because you can see a lot more uh, of your browser list at once uh, it's a nice high resolution it's a high frame rate so everything looks really smooth they've made a really nice useful touch interface here so that you can you know use that if that's what you prefer but there's also hard buttons for pretty much almost everything that's important so if I want to scroll up and down you know by doing a swipe motion I can do that or I can you know use the old school scroll knob if I want to load into deck one or two I can just tap there or I could hit the physical button for that there I'm finding myself using that uh, touch screen one just because it's you know it's right there load two, bam and it's done so that's pretty cool. There you're seeing our dual band waveforms. If we go into the menu here, you can see there's just so much that you can go in here and customize. It, it kind of oozes professionalism when you look in here and you can see, oh, I can attenuate the booth monitor. Oh, I can change the equalizer and channel fader curves. You know, does the mic go out to the master recording or not? So yeah, there's a lot that you can do if you just kind of poke around here in the utilities. As far as the general layout goes, you know, this part right here looks like a CDJ3000. Uh, these parts, the deck sections, are sort of like miniaturized versions of CDJ3000. So the jog wheels, they feel really nice, they spin really well. 
um, and they, they kind of float. They don't have that kind of grindy feeling that you might get from lower end gear. Uh, and they did add the tension adjustment, so that's really nice. It doesn't get as loosey-goosey as the CDJ-3000, but it does feel uh, really good. It's really smooth, kind of has that floaty feel, which is what you want. So up here at the top, uh, you've got your dual mic controls. There are two mics on this device. Uh, over here on the other side, you can see there are two USB inputs. So if you do changeovers, you play with other DJs, stuff like that, you can connect uh, two different things there at once. And pretty much everything here will look fairly familiar. You've got your, your typical loop controls that have been the same on CDJs for ages now. Your uh, Q and loop recalls and memories here. Uh, you can you know reverse the direction of your track here. And so not a whole lot to talk about here in that uh, deck section other than the fact that we do have these nice, uh, nicer upgraded displays now on the, the on-jog displays. Moving on to the mixer section though, uh, this is something that's uh, really worth talking about because, well, this is essentially a, this is pretty close to a DJM 900 Nexus 2, especially in the realm of effects. So if you look over here, you've got all your effects that you expect from the 900 Nexus 2, including the six sound color effects. The beat pads have a great feeling to them. They don't give that kind of clicky resistance. You know, they, they push back, they're, they're stiff. It's not springy, I guess is my point. It has a really good beat pad feeling to it. Um, all the knobs and sliders, you know, they feel pretty much uh, as you'd expect them from a good higher end uh, Pioneer piece of hardware. Uh, the only thing that's really, uh, really gonna be different from the Nexus setup is the fact that it doesn't have Magvel faders. So if you're like a, a Super Scratch DJ and you want that like Magvel crossfader, this doesn't have that. So that is one thing that uh, you miss out on on. Um, but the faders themselves are, you know, heavy-duty, good Pioneer faders. They, they feel good, so they should last through many, many cycles. And as we look around here to the back, you can see there are XLR balance connections, so you can properly connect it to any professional sound rig. And then, of course, you do have your RCA master outs there as well, and your quarter-inch booth output Right over here, you have your USB input for connecting to a laptop. Once again, this will work with Record Box in performance mode, and starting early next year, it will work with Serato as well. Moving on over here, you see there are channel one and two inputs here for phono and line, so it does accept external inputs, such as turntables or CDJs, if you have those available to you and you want to use those as direct input. Uh, over here we have an auxiliary input and this little portable jack which is a nice little convenient addition if you just need to plug in a phone or something really quick. We also have balanced mic inputs here. We showed you the controls on the top earlier for that and your standard IEC power cable. Alright, so let's get specific about the differences between this and its predecessor, the RX2. So, the most striking and obvious update to the RX3 is this stunning 10.1 inch touchscreen. Now this is a very welcome addition, and so we get some lovely features for rapid browsing. The playlist bank is a section which holds four playlists for rapid track selection, and of course we also inherit touch preview which is a handy feature that lets you preview a track without actually having to load it into a deck. The XDJ RX3 now supports three band waveforms, once again just like the CDJ3000. Now this is a simple feature that I'm a big fan of. While it still supports the standard blue and full RGB waveforms just like before, three band waveforms will display different colors for the high, mid, and low frequency bands. And so this makes it really easy to see what's going on in a certain segment of the song by just having a quick glance. There are some welcome upgrades to the jog wheel as well. The enhanced on-color display is a little LCD in each wheel, which shows track artwork and playhead position for that deck. And also, the jog wheels are now tension adjustable, so whether you like it you know, loose and free or kind of tight and grippy, you can dial that in right here using that jog adjust. Now before we get into the effects, I'd like to talk about a couple of tools that have been added which will be appreciated by certain kinds of working DJs. So there's the countdown timer, which lets you set down a timer that uh, approaches a crucial point in your set. So think like midnight on New Year's Eve. 
And then there's repeat mode. This works just how it sounds. It allows you to keep a track or playlist on repeat to keep the music going when you walk away. Now Pioneer points out that this could be helpful in a situation like a sound check. Now as I've mentioned, the mixer section here is basically a DJM 900 Nexus 2. Uh, especially as it relates to the effects. You get access to every one of its 14 beat effects and the six sound color effects. So if you're not already familiar, here's the difference. Beat effects are a sort of traditional way of applying tempo-driven effects on Pioneer mixers. So you select an effect here, you select what channels you want to apply it to, the timing of the effect, and then the level or depth of the effect. So essentially you have some control over the parameters of your effects. The sound color effects are meant to be more like one knob solutions. You push a button over here to select an effect and you twist a knob to enable it, such as a low pass or high pass filter. So this is a really cool thing right here. We talked about the inclusion of a beat effects bank. So you can effectively over here in this little bank, save your little effects presets over here and then just quickly access them with the touch of a button. So that's really neat. And then if you go over here, see if I go and switch through the effects here, the reverb is already in here so it lights up when I go past that. Uh, another thing that they added, which is really neat, this comes from the 900 Nexus, sort of, and that's the X pad. And what that is, is this little section right here. So on the 900 Nexus, it, this is a physical pad, but on here they've moved it to the screen. And effectively what it lets you do is kind of use your finger in a swiping motion to add effects uh, kind of with one touch sort of thing. So uh, let's do a filter effect. Then we could just use our finger and swipe across here. So that's basically how that works if we take it, let's say, a phaser. So it's pretty neat that they've added that. They just added it here as part of the touchscreen interface. Uh, and, and one really cool thing that I like about this is, so you'll notice if I switch effects to something that needs a specific beat division, it actually changes the screen to show your you know, full beat, three quarters of a beat, and so on. And so you can, at a glance, look at it and go, oh, I want that three, quarter, that three quarters cut. And then you have your sound color effects, and these are meant to be your sort of one-stop shop, your, your single knob effects. So for example, if you want to do a filter sweep, you enable the filter like that, and then twist the knob left or right. Just like any other Pioneer mixer. Dub echo. And so on. Sounds just like you would expect from a Pioneer mixer, and it works right here in hardware. Okay, so release effects. Uh, this is kind of interesting. I really like this new feature. So basically what this is, is sort of like an instant effect that sort of like majorly changes uh, the song for like a good transition into a new song or something like that. So I'll show you what I mean. Basically it's on the slip loop button here. If you push it twice where it says release effects, uh, then what will actually happen is the screen will change up here and it will show you the different effects that are applied so that you don't have to remember what's going on down here on the beat pads. I really like that and that's making really good smart use of the screen. Uh, I appreciate that uh, attention to UI design. Basically uh, what happens is you've got these little effects and you've got a, a sort of vinyl break effect here on the left so that's you got a short one and a long one they sound like this of course there's a longer one and that'll just hold there for as long as I hold it until I release the effect right here we've got a backspin effect, short and long. That's the short one. Here's the long one. All right, you've got an echo out. I imagine that one will get used quite a bit. 
You also have a build-up, and this one's pretty cool. It basically does that looping where it halves the beat division, and you get that little uh, build-up like this. So if you use that in the right place, you end up with a pretty cool build-up, you know, right before the start of a phrase or something like that. Right here you have a straight-up mute function. And then you have a ducking effect like this. Just sort of an automated duck. Alright, so thus far we've mostly focused on how the RX3 compares to its earlier versions, but you might be wondering how well it stacks up against the other standalones on the market. Particularly, you might be wondering whether to choose this for $2,000 or the absolutely enormous XDJ XZ for $2,300. After all, this one has a bigger and better screen with higher resolution and frame rate. Well, for starters, the XZ is a four-channel device, so if you insist on mixing with more than two channels, that kind of rules the RX3 out. Another thing that the RX3 lacks is DVS support, which seems, hmm, possibly intentional? But in any case, spending the extra $300 gets you two extra channels, the ability to use timecode, and a notably downgraded screen, more akin to a CDJ2000 Nexus. Of course, the other obvious comparison would be to the Denon Prime units. Specifically, the Prime 2 is a powerful two-channel system that utilizes Engine OS. It's a $1,500 system, and it does have a big beautiful screen, but it's not as large as this one on the new RX3. However, the Prime 4 also has a beautiful 10-inch screen, which supports multi-touch, by the way, which is not the case here, and supports four channels for $100 less. Those units will also analyze tracks on the fly, which is not supported on the RX3. So Engine OS devices seem to be winning the bang for buck war, so they're definitely worth considering. However, it's also worth noting that the Pioneer flagship system that this RX3 seeks to emulate costs well north of six grand. Now there's one more notable omission with the XDJ RX3 that we should talk about, and that is streaming. So the other standalones on the market are embracing streaming technology via services like Tidal, Beatport, and BeatSource Link, and SoundCloud Go, even all the way down to the humble Newmark Mixstream Pro. In fact, check out my review of that unit right here on the DJ Hookup. Uh, surprisingly, Pioneer doesn't seem interested in supporting that type of DJing with this unit. There's no Wi-Fi, and if you remember around on the back, there's no Ethernet port either. So if you've started building a cloud collection, you're out of luck. So to sort of wrap it up, the RX3 showcases a terrific screen and an excellent record box workflow while bringing a slew of welcomed upgrades over its predecessor. And of course, $2,000 is not cheap by any means, but it is a huge savings over the 3000s and the 900 Nexus 2 setup. And it's an excellent stand-in for that system, because as far as most DJs are concerned, the only real difference is combining the interface into one single screen. You know, once you get used to this, it's pretty much the same as playing on the, here it comes, industry standard setup. So owners of smaller bars or clubs will certainly be drawn to a device like the RX3, and so will club DJs who just want a proper setup at home but would rather buy a small car for the price of a CDJ3000 setup. So there's also a segment of mobile DJs who will appreciate this because even though it is a bit heavy and cumbersome, it's not as huge as the XZ and it is a one-stop shop as is the nature of all-in-one DJ systems. Honestly, I've found that the Pioneer XDJ systems have been well-loved by really all sorts of DJs. Uh, for example, my friend Jared of the band Crystal Grid uses an RX2 during their live performances to this day, and he loves it. Anyone who likes the Rekordbox ecosystem, anyone who likes Pioneer mixers, uh, anyone who likes lots of effects will be very happy. Uh, as will anybody who likes keeping laptops out of the DJ booth. So remember that it does operate as a controller too, and starting early next year we'll even work with Serato. So this device continues the XDJ RX tradition of consolidating the most important parts of a CDJ setup into a single device, and in that light it proves to be an excellent value for the money. 
and thus we bring our review of the RX3 to a close. This is a great system, a worthy successor to the RX2, and if you've decided that this is the system for you, head on over to the best DJ retailer on the planet, that's the DJHookup.com. Get in that little chat bar and uh, see what deal they can work for you. The RX3, uh, whether you're getting into uh, standalone DJing for the first time, whether you already are in a record box system, uh, this could be a great upgrade, and I hope that you appreciate it the same way that I do. If you'd like to see more DJ-related videos like this, either relating to hardware, uh, podcast episodes for DJs, stories, inspirational content, how-to content, all that kind of stuff, check out my channel. It's called Passionate DJ. There will be a link in the description below, and I hope you enjoy it. But for now, we will see you next time right here on the DJ Hookup.